With NASA's shuttle Atlantis retired and bound for a museum, it might seem like space exploration is on the verge of being grounded. But much of it is just moving out of the hands of the government. Dozens of private companies around the world are plotting a new course to pick up from where NASA left off an unmanned space flight. The XPRIZE Foundation is running a competition right now to see which of 29 firms can accomplish the first privately funded robotic landing on the moon. And there's $30 million in prize money from Google at stake. To talk more about this new space race, we're joined by Peter Diamandis. He's the founder and CEO of the XPRIZE Foundation. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Allison. So tell us a bit about what these 29 teams have to do. They've got to build a spacecraft, get to the moon, land on it, and then what? Yeah, that's all they have to do. And and I would say that the era of space exploration is really just beginning because we're putting into the hands of uh, individual small companies, uh, universities, the ability to literally go and do something that only two countries have ever done before. You know, the United States and the Soviet Union, only two have landed on the surface of the moon. And so for $30 million, what's up at stake is building a private lunar lander landing, sending back photos and basically YouTube videos, Mm -hmm. and then going exploring a half a kilometer, 500 meters, and then sending back more photos and videos. It's really enabling a new generation of personal exploration in space. And there's some bonuses for people that whose lander can survive the lunar night and the extreme conditions there. What are some of the others? So we've, we've said, listen, if you land and send back the photos, fantastic. If you uh, are able to survive through the lunar night where you really have the temperatures plummeting as the sunlight disappears and the moon goes into permanent shadows for 14 days, or my favorite, if you're able to actually image, send back photographs of Apollo hardware. So if you're able to get close enough to take photos and you know dispel all those myths about not having gone to the moon, then you, you win more prize money. Ever since I saw the movie, you know, 2001, I've been wanting to go into space and ride on that lovely little rocket with the cute women and the, you know, walking <laughs> around in the circles. How close are we to that kind of scenario? So one of my company, Space Adventures, we have three seats available over the next three years for someone who wants to go to the International Space Station for 10 days. And that's an incredible ride. But even better than that, we've signed an agreement with the Russian Space Agency for a circumlunar flight for on the order of $110 million or so. You can go to the space station for 10 days, and then we'll boost you around the backside of the moon and come back. You've got a Russian cosmonaut as your pilot, you and one of your friends. It's the ride of a lifetime. See, we'll take some champagne. I'll go get my credit card. But in the meantime, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Tell Me More from NPR News. We're speaking with Peter Diamandis about the Google Lunar X Prize, a modern-day race to the moon that hopes to bring about the first privately backed moon landing. And tell me, why is Google willing to put out such big money for this? And what kind of role is NASA playing? Google's mission here is to really inspire a new generation of scientists and engineers. Uh, Larry Page, who's the, now the CEO of Google, who's on my board at XPRIZE, Sergey Brin, who's been uh, you know, the co-founder, a huge advocate of space. I had presented the idea to them of a lunar XPRIZE, you know, mm-hmm. that it's now possible, and they on the spot said, yes, let's do it. Uh, we ended up uh, launching that now about uh, three and a half years ago. So once we get to the future and we've got Robert Heinlein's Luna City and mm-hmm. billboards on the moon and everything, what, what kind of rules are there governing what companies can and can't do? I mean, who owns the property rights? Who owns the mining rights? Can you just land there and start building an apartment building? So that's interesting. Uh, you know, there have been two sets of laws, the Moon Treaty and the Outer Space Treaty, that have governed a lot of, uh, of activities. But first of all, the U.S. isn't signatory to the Moon Treaty. Ah. And the Outer Space Treaties really govern government's actions and not private individuals or corporations. Okay, wait. If the U.S. isn't signatory to the Moon Treaty, what does that mean for the right? Uh, well, it means a lot of this is up for grabs. A lot of this is undefined. So, for example, a, we believe that the law of the sea type of thinking is going to apply to space, which means that you don't own the sea, but if you take fish out of the ocean, you own those fish. The same way you may not own the moon, but if you extract precious materials or oxygen or helium-3, whatever it might be, you then own that. So a lot of this is going to be defined by these early companies that get there and uh, the the case they can make in the world courts and to the governments that that govern them. So the deadline set for the end of 2015. How how many of the teams do you think will actually make it to the moon by then? Well, our hope is at least one. You know, all of our X prizes typically have a third of the teams that are 
able to raise the capital, have the technology and the people, a third that have the potential, and the third we didn't want to turn away. You know, we're fond of saying we don't want to turn away those pesky bicycle mechanics from Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> you never know who's going to have the breakthrough. You've got teams from all over the world in this competition. Are there any rivalries developing yet? So I'm excited about that. You know, we have we do have teams from a dozen plus countries from uh, from Israel and from South America and from Canada, the U.S., the U.K., you know, China. It's incredibly diverse and. I am really trying to stoke the fire of the international competition because, of course, that's what got us to the moon in the first place. So what's next for the X Prize Foundation? Are we talking maybe a man trip to the moon or, or better yet, the Star Trek Enterprise at some point <laughs> in the future down the line? <laughs> so it's really it's exciting. We're, we're focused on X Prizes in energy and environment and life sciences, but we have in development an X Prize for autonomous cars. Uh, Qualcomm is underwritten us to design a tricorder X Prize going back to the Star Trek universe. You know, a device that you can talk to, you can cough on, you can do a blood finger prick, and it can diagnose you better than a group of 10 board certified doctors. So it's no question, Rod Roddenberry, the son of uh, Gene Roddenberry, the mm-hmm. legendary creator of Star Trek, is a very close friend and advisor. And we do think of Star Trek as inspiration for where we should be doing our follow on X Prizes. You're a CEO of this company. Are you planning on setting foot on the moon? It is my personal dream. So my mission, I want to be the first private citizen to set foot on the moon. That would be my dream. Fulfilling Heinlein's The Man Who Sold the Moon and getting there mm-hmm. myself. All right. Peter Diamandis is the founder and CEO of the XPRIZE Foundation. He joined us from our studios at NPR West. Thank you so much for the future conversation. My pleasure.